Hello, this is Pastor Dave Stewart of Destiny Preparation Church. I'd like to welcome you to our program. This is Roads Destiny, brought to you by Destiny Preparation Church. So happy to have you with us again this week. For those of you, by the way, who may be tuning us in for the first time, I'd like to welcome you. Glad to have you with us on our program. We're happy to be able to share this ministry with you here each and every week, both through our television program here in the local area and also through the internet. Welcome to you. Happy to have you with us. I hope that you are bl will be blessed by the program. I hope that you stick around and receive something great today. Well, we're bringing this to you from Destiny Preparation Church. We're located at 1230 Long Pond Road in the area of Greece outside of the Rochester area. We're right down from Greece Ridge Mall. If you turn from Ridge Road on to Long Pond, 1230 Long Pond is right down from the corner of Ridge and Long Pond. Just down just a, really a couple hundred feet. So make sure you don't go past. You come on down and just before Long Pond comes back together again, because it's split on Ridge, just before it comes back together again, you'll find a turn right here into the church. So come and join us in any of our services. We do meet here on Sundays and Wednesdays. Sundays, we have our Sunday school at 10 a.m., followed by our morning worship service on Sunday at 11.30 a.m. And on Wednesdays, we meet for prayer at 6.30 and for Bible study, midweek Bible study, beginning at 7 p.m. Right now, we're doing a very special uh, program on Wednesdays called Establishing Yourself in God, a great running program. And if you want to learn more about being connected to God and having a relationship with God, we invite you to come and join us uh, any week going on for several the next several weeks. We also want to share with you that we have prayer that takes place here, not only locally, but online. You can join with us by phone. You can have your relatives, your family, your friends join with us, people that can't come to church or don't want to come to church but need prayer. You can invite them to join with us to pray every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. and every Saturday morning at 8 a.m. We have prayer. It takes place online. You can meet us here on Wednesdays, but you can also call us at the number on your screen and join with us, connect with us at, for prayer anytime, any week. It will be a blessing to you. By the way, you can also send us your prayer requests. Send them to prayer at destinypreparation.org. That's prayer at destinypreparation.org. If you have a prayer request, someone else in your family, something going on that you want us to lift up, by all means, send it to us. We've just had a really awesome time over the past several weeks as we started doing this regularly on both both days with people calling in from all over the country and connecting up with us in prayer. It's a powerful, powerful time and so many things we've been praying for. We invite you to be a part of it by connecting up with us in any of these ways. I also want to just mention to you that I've got something special happening this weekend. We have uh, something a little bit fun. Like now, now and then we like to lighten up a little bit. And we have our cabin fellowship taking place this weekend on Saturday. It's going to be a great time of fellowship coming together. We are looking forward to it. If you'd like to come out and join us, by all means, contact the church for more information, and we'd love to have you connect up. Just a little bit of fun, a little bit of g gathering together, families and friends in a wonderful cabin, scenery. We're gonna, it's going to keep it warm, have some nice warm things there to drink and some things to eat as well. And for the kids, some wonderful fun things to have outside. At least it's getting a little warmer now, so it's not quite the way it was, uh, but you'll be able to enjoy it with us uh, coming up this weekend. So now let me take you to the Word of God. This is uh, going to uh, bless you, I believe, in a great way. This sermon comes from a few weeks ago, and it actually comes from the beginning of the year. And it starts with this concept of connecting up with God and being in line with what God wants to do. So the theme, the title is called Making My Plan God's Plan. And I pray that this will bless you and enable you to connect up with what God wants to have happen in your life this year. God bless you. I hope we'll see you real soon. This is the time of year where we begin to get things in line and look for new opportunities and see what God is going to do in our lives. To do this, we need to establish plans and priorities. I want to give you some things to help you to prepare for this year. We establish at this time of the year plans and priorities. Some people call them resolutions. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to stop doing. I'm getting ready to do more of this and less of that. There, these are things that we need to align in getting ourselves ready for this year. First, the first thing you need is priorities. The first thing you need to consider this year is what are your priorities? What are the most important things in your life for 2015? I'm giving this to you. I want you to take this home as an exercise. This whole sermon is to prepare you to, to do some things when you leave here today. 
The first thing you need is to establish what are your priorities for 2015. What things do you want to accomplish? What accomplishments do you want to see happen? What achievements are you looking for? What are your goals and targets? What are the things that you want to see happen in your life? What are the things that need to happen in order for you to be happy, to be more spiritual, to be healthier, to have more enjoyment, more satisfaction in your life? All these things relate to priorities in my life. This year, I want to be less stressed out. This year, I want to experience more joy in my life. I want to have more peace of mind. I want to be closer to God. That's my priority. I want to hear from heaven. I want to be able to receive the word of God into my spirit. These are things that you, you set up as being my priorities for 2015. What's the most important uses of your time? Time is such an important thing for us to understand our priorities about. Because if you don't put any priorities about your time, anything and everything will come to take it away. Everything comes to try and steal your time. So you have to have priorities. What's the most important element of the use of my time? And then this, and then this. Put it in a proper order to you. What are the things that you have to do versus what are the things that you would like to do? Don't have them on the same plane. There are certain things I got to do, so I got to put these first in here. And then there are other things I like to do, and I'll fill, in, fill those in in between. I must... Spend time with God. I must make time for my family. I must achieve this goal. I would like to go on a vacation. I would like to have some time to do X, Y, and Z. You've got to put, if you put them all at the same plane and level, it's just going to make it more difficult. Get the must do's out of the way first and then put the like to do's in after that. Which of these are most important to you? So once you begin to write down and document and clarify in your heart and mind your priorities for the year, then you need to begin to make a plan. How do I get to the achievements that I'm targeting? How am I gonna get from here to there? I want to achieve this by the end of the year. How am I gonna get there? I wanna lose 50 pounds by year end. How do you get there? It's one thing to have a target. It's one thing to have a goal, but you need to have a plan. I want to read the Bible in a certain amount of time. Well, how are you going to get there? You need a plan on how you're going to do it. Okay? So you want to have a plan, not just ideas. Ideas don't get you anywhere. They sound great. They sound lovely. I really like to achieve this. I really like to climb that mountain. I really like to do this. But if you have no plan, those ideas aren't going very far. They may or may not happen. If you want to achieve something, you have to put a plan in place. And that plan needs to be achievable. Not just, you know, I want to read the Bible and I want it done by next week. Ooh, Lord. Okay, you got a plan to do that? That, that, that may or may not be achievable. I, I, I want to, you know, become my own boss. and I want to own my own business. And I want to do this by the end of January. Okay? That may be possible. But if you don't have a plan, it's probably not going to happen. It needs to be an achievable goal with a plan that can reasonably get you from stage one to stage two. And then you're going to have to be consistent in following the plan. You can't put a plan together today and you've lost it, forgotten all about it by next week. Amen? You can't put a plan together today and then change it six or seven times. Sometimes you may need to adjust it, but the goal, the end needs to remain the same, and you need to stay consistent with your plan. My plan involves me doing a little bit less of this every day. Well, you got to stick to that. It involves me doing a little bit more of this every day. You got to stick to that. They're saying right now, in terms of the gym, I saw somebody on television the other day talking about starting their new year out. You know, the gyms this time of year are just flooded. They're packed. They're jam packed with people. Amen. And everybody in the in the in the in the you know in the changing room, everybody was saying, y'all know by you know February first, we're gonna have our gym back, right? Everybody's gonna be gone and we'll have our space back. You know, they say that to begin any behavior, change of behavior, that you need to be consistent with it for at least six weeks. They say if you're consistent for at least six weeks, you have a good probability that you will then establish and maintain that behavior after that. So you have to be consistent with the plan. If you just do it one week, you know, if you don't follow that up, it's probably not going to go any further than that. 
Now, along with these priorities and plans, you have to consider risks or limits of your plan. I'm trying to go very quickly, so bear with me. I can get the CD afterwards. Okay? You, you have to be aware of risks and limits because you cannot control everything. You think you got a plan, you think this will work, you think you've considered everything, but you know what? Stuff comes up that you hadn't planned for. There are things in your plan that may be a little bit more risky than other parts. I know I can do this, I can know I can do that, but I need this to work out here. If this works out, okay, then this will be, will be okay. But what happens in your plan if you get down the line to a certain point and something happens that you hadn't planned for? You have to have contingencies. You have to be ready to consider what happens if something goes wrong in your plan. You don't want to get to a certain point, oh, didn't work out, I quit. Right? Because understand, typically something is going to come up different from what you plan. So you have to be ready to deal with those things if something changes. Also understand that there are some things that are beyond you. Everything cannot be planned for. There are some things that happen, some things that are going to happen that are not in your control. So you're going to have to be ready to deal with that when it comes. When it comes to serving God, understand this. His plans can be different from our plans. You got a plan that you think is going to work out, but that plan may not be God's plan. And so it's important for us to align, to get synergy between what we're thinking is going to happen and believing for and what God is prepared to do. That's why in the month of January, we've got to stop and not only consider what we want, but consider what God wants. We've got to get the temple right first. And then we can follow the plan. Once we're in alignment with God, once we're on the same page, then we can follow his plan, uh, our plan, as, as, as though it's God's plan. Now, Jesus gave us one of the best examples that we can see of aligning our, a life plan with God's plan. Jesus lived for the purpose of the Father and understood that was his purpose. The reason Jesus was here, the only reason he was here, was to execute the will and the purpose of the Father. He had total understanding and he was totally comfortable with that. So whatever the Father wanted to do with him, that's what he was prepared to do. He lived out the purpose of the Father. And that purpose, number one, to show the world what it looked like to be God's man on earth, and then to save the world. That was his purpose. He lived for 33 and a half years to show the world. This is what it looks like to be a follower of God, to be obedient to God, to serve the Lord, to do what God would have to say. When you see my life, Jesus was saying, you see what we're, our lives are supposed to look like following God. And then to save the world. At a certain point in time, that phase of his, his objective was complete, and now he had to surrender his life to die to save us. That was his purpose. That's what he lived for. But even in the midst of that, Jesus in flesh had his own preferences. How many of y'all realize we have our own preferences? Even though we want to live for God, there's some things we'd rather do, there's some things we'd rather not do. Amen? Some things we want out of life. Amen? I can imagine Jesus might have liked to have lived a little bit more than 33 and a half years. I imagine there are times when he probably wanted a break. Sometimes he went to the mountaintops because folks, let me just tell you, folks probably got on his nerves. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen? There are times when he needed to retreat, to pray, to hear from God, to get re-energized. It's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of weight physically, emotionally, and pouring out to people and helping this one and blessing and praying for that one and doing. There were times when he needed relief. There are times when he had his own agenda that he may have wanted to do, but yet he chose to surrender his father's will. Let me ask you this. If you can't surrender your will in eating, what makes you think you're going to be able to surrender your will to the spiritual obstacles that come in your life? If you can't surrender up your preferences and choice in terms of what you do on a, in a certain day, how do we feel we can possibly submit to God when God's telling you to do things that you do not want to do? That's why we need to learn how to surrender and submit ourselves. Jesus just gave us the example of choosing to surrender and submit to his Father's will, even when it did not agree with his. In John chapter 14 and 10, Jesus says these words in the New Living Translation. He says, don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say are not my own. 
but my Father who lives in me does his work through me. Jesus was perfectly aligned and determined to fulfill not his purpose, but God's purpose. That was his life. That was his reason for living. We ought to have this in mind, that the reason I live today is for God and not for me. The, prob the place we run into problems is when we forget that and we get so locked in on what we want that we forget to seek what God wants from us. How many of you realize, they used to say in the old church, amen, that when, when we were saved, when Christ died for us, they used to say we were bought with a price. You've been bought. Your life is no longer your own. When you surrender to Christ, amen, you stop living for yourself and you start living for him. Just when he stopped living in order to save you, to give you life, that's when we stop living for us in place of that and then live his life instead. That's why we're called the body of Christ. We live for him, not for us. And so we have to make a choice every day to submit our desires, our preferences, our wants for God's wants. Amen? We make the choice. In Luke chapter 22 and verse 42, Jesus cried out. I told you he had his own preferences. He cried out just before, amen, they were come, the soldiers were coming to take him to the cross. He said, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Amen? How many of you realize Jesus wasn't not exactly thrilled about hanging on a cross? He wasn't really excited. He wasn't praising God. They were about to beat him with stripes, and he knew everything was going to happen. They were about to put a crown, a crown of throne on, thorns on his head. They were about to beat him and smite him and, 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 and abuse him and lie on him, and his friends were about to walk away. How many of you realize this was not something that Jesus in the flesh was looking forward to? Amen? So understand, you may have to go through some things, amen, for God that you may not be looking forward to. Amen. That doesn't mean it's not God's will. See, a lot of us feel like, you know, oh, if this isn't going to be good, this can't be God. No, this can't. No, me going through this, God would never want me. Oh, yeah, there are times when you have to go through things that you may not be looking forward to, but it is God's will. And you need to go through it. Amen. I, I'm going to just put it out there today. I'm on one of those. Stop using those things as excuses. Amen. No, I'm not. I can't do that. It can't be God's will. God doesn't want me to suffer like that. Sometimes God chooses to allow us to suffer. And we have to be willing to submit ourselves to suffering for the name's sake of God. Amen. He said, if you be your will, Lord, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. He would prefer not to suffer. But if God wants him to suffer, then I'm willing to to suffer for God's sake. That's the mindset we have to understand. You know, I may not want to do this. <laughs> I keep reeling. I may not want to fast this week, <laughs> this month, but Lord, if it's your will, then your will is more important than my satisfaction. Amen? Amen? Amen. That's a choice. That's a decision that we have to make. Jesus submitted to the will of the Father. The question for you today is, have you submitted your life plan to God? The things that you're thinking about doing, the things that you want to be, the things you want to achieve. Have you submitted your life plan to God? Have you put the temple first? Have you gotten your alignment with Christ as the first thing in your life before you started running off with our plan? See, that's why some of us run into problems. We run off with our plan of what we want to do, but some things are out, out of our control. And if God has a different plan than you, you got some trouble coming. Because God's going to do what he wants to do. So we need to align our plan to God's plan. I want you to understand that our self-nature typically considers us first and then others. It's our sinful nature. It's the self part of us that wants what we want first. We tend to priority that, prioritize that first, and then these other things kind of flow in and around that. Yeah, I want to make sure I'm okay, and then when I'm okay, then I'll help the needy kids, and I'll help this person over there, and I'll give more in the offering, and I'll do these different things, and I'll sacrifice my time. Once I'm set up, once I'm straight, once I get my house to where I've got the car and the stuff that I want, then I'll help somebody else. We, it's, 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 not, it's our nature to put self first. That's not a godly nature. That's a spirit. That's a sinful nature in us that wants us to be satisfied and have everything right first. And then we want to do what we want to do for others. In that, oftentimes we start running in a direction, find out we've gone the wrong way because we ran on a track to do what we wanted to do to eventually find out, Lord, why isn't this working out? 
Why am I having so many problems? Why are there so many obstacles? What's going on? It's because we didn't stop to get ourselves in alignment with God first. You know, when two partners are working together, say you have a business, say you have a joint venture, and you're two partners, two partners can't each set up their plan for the year and then just begin to run off their plan, right? They have to sit together. They have to line up. They have to come into agreement. This is how we are going to work together. Husbands and wives can't just decide to do their own thing. I'm going to buy a car. I'm going to buy a house. Okay, well, whose money? How much money y'all got? Amen? You have to come together and come into agreement. These are our priorities. We'll take care of this situation, and then that one, and then in that one. The Bible says, how can two walk together unless they agree? We need to be in alignment with God. You can't have your plan, and God's got his plan, and then you're trying to figure out why things aren't working right. We have to come in alignment. God, here's what's on my heart. Let me understand and know that it's what you want me to do. Because if it's not what you want me to do, I don't want to run down that road, amen, just to hit a dead end. Let's get in alignment now. Speak to me, Lord, about what you want to achieve in my life in 2015. Show me where you were taking me. Let me get in alignment with your thoughts and your ideas, and then we'll make a plan that aligns with those things. Oftentimes, we need to understand, we need to question if our desires are God's desires. Are we in alignment? And what is it that God wants from our life in 2015? In Isaiah chapter 30, verse 1, the New Living Translation, God is speaking here to the people, and he says this. Listen to these words. He says, destruction is certain for my rebellious children. Ooh, y'all didn't know God talked to his children like that, right? Destruction is certain for my rebellious children, says the Lord. Why? He says, listen, you make plans that are contrary to my will. You weave a web of plans that are not from my spirit, thus piling up your sins. God is frustrated with the children of Israel because they're going out doing their thing and they're not lining up with him. That's what happens when we decide what we're going to do and we're not in alignment with God. All we do is frustrate God and frustrate ourselves because we're trying to figure out why it won't work. God, why didn't this work? Probably because you didn't ask me first. Amen? What happens, I don't know about y'all, you ever have children, you know, that they make their own plans, decide what they're going to do, and, and either they, don't, they, they tell you later or they don't tell you at all? You're trying to figure out what's going on? You know, you want, if you were making a plan using my car, perhaps you should have told me about your plan, because your plan might not work out, sweetie. I might have other plans for my car and for my house. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. God says he's frustrated with his children. They're running off making plans that don't align with him. We do the same thing to God. Come on. Amen. Amen. We decide what we're going to do and what we're going to be and where we're going without consulting God and then get frustrated wondering why it's not working. We need to be in alignment with God. Jeremiah 29 and 11. He says this, he says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. God has plans in mind for you. We need to be in alignment with his plans. We need to align ourselves with what God is, wants to do in our life. And if you don't know what God's plans are for you, then you need to stop and ask him. You know how we do that? Prayer and fasting. Sounds familiar, amen? We learn what God wants by seeking after him. So before we get in gear and start running and tearing into 2015, let me tell you, the first thing we need to do is stop and seek what God would have for us. We need to make God's plan our plan. Last thing I want to give you, if you want to experience success in 2015, let me give you five things real quick you need to do. Five things to do, amen, to experience God's success in 2015. Number one, determine your priorities. I've already given you parts of this. Determine your priorities. Seek God's priorities in your life. Make sure God is truly number one. As you start putting together and writing down and thinking out, these are the things that are important to me in 2015. These are the things I want to achieve. This is what I want to accomplish. As you start writing them down, then seek God. That's what we're doing in January. Make sure that God is in alignment with the same priorities that you are. You decide you want to go to the gym seven days a week. But, oh, gosh, being in gym all that time, I'm not going to have time to pray like I need to. 
Oh, well, I guess I'm going to the gym. Amen? You have to align your priorities to what God wants for your life. Well, God would rather have you pray. Okay? So I may have to go to the gym either less amount of time at a time or maybe less frequently because I've got to get my prayer time in. I've got to get my church time in. I've got to get my feeding time in. I've got to get my priorities in alignment with God's priorities for me. Get the temple built first. Number one, determine your priorities. Number two, set targets. A lot of times we leave things so open-ended that we don't achieve anything. We kind of live life in this, we'll kind of see what happens mode. And as a result of that, oftentimes nothing happens. Nothing changes. We just keep going through things the same way and complaining about the same problems. Amen? I really don't like this. I really hate this. Well, why don't you do something about it? Hmm. <laughs> Novel thought, right? 